Okie dokie. get this up here all right give me a thumbs up if you can see like the front page humanities and culture steph hankinson excellent thank you thumbs appreciate okay so i've got the chat open again if you've got questions along the way pop it in the chat so you're probably wondering what a humanities major is. Okay, so humanities expands our knowledge of human cultures and it helps us understand what binds us together and what differentiates us from each other within a global context. And so humanities, I like to think of it as this, the study of human culture and systems of power. These things are sort of connected. And so some of the topics that, that come up a lot in humanities courses are race, gender, class, nationality, markers of identity, right? Sexual orientation, language, ability, things like that. Uh, we talk a lot about popular culture and media, representations of identity in the media comes up a lot. Um, social justice revolution, we talk about empire and power structures globally. And uh, storytelling, this is a theme that you'll have through almost any humanities course is how we tell the stories of our culture um, how we connect with each other through storytelling and the power that stories have to uh, give voice to communities, right? And so then we've got on here a couple of other things that, that tend to come up frequently, global, cultural, political, and social histories. And so thinking about how history informs the present comes up a lot um, and ways that we wanna reimagine or re, uh, re sort of claim histories that maybe have been silenced or forgotten, right? Typically it's silence. We talk a lot about power again. Uh, and then social relationships. That's something that comes up a lot in humanities courses. Who are we, who am I? And uh, how does that put me in a situation to relate to the rest of the world around me and those in, within my community? So um, I would love to play this quick little video. And this is from uh, another college, but I thought it was a good introduction to kind of the ideas in the humanities that you'll be exposed to and, and what it might feel like to um, to actually study within the field. So I'm gonna go ahead and start playing. It's about two minutes, so just hang tight. Let me click this. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear it. The humanities are incredibly important for an understanding and therefore working with change makers in the world. I think the humanities provide us with a really important opportunity to understand what it is that we sort of live for and how we experience our lives. One of the great gifts, I think, of studying the humanities is that although you're pursuing expertise, the thing in which you're pursuing expertise is something that has resonance for any human being with a heart and a mind and a soul. As we delve into our particular subjects, we're invited to not lose sight of the general sort of awe at what it means to be a human. I think it's important to understand the history and cultures and economics and so on of the past to make decisions that are based on fact and based on a tactful and compassionate understanding of different societies in the world. The, the way we engage with the world and our the emotions that we experience through the world are all things that I think the humanities can really uh, allow us to kind of understand, make sense of those experiences. It's vitally important for everyone to, sort of, to understand him or herself better to know what it is that really sets them on fire. You're able to think about how facts are presented to people and how those facts are told and about how that kind of rhetoric shapes the world and I think that's incredibly important politically and socially. I think a study of the humanities invites us to also question the systems we have created for ourselves as we look at history and as we look at the literature that um, makes our heart beats faster and the art that encourages us to admire the planet around us, I think we end up asking ourselves if the society as a whole that we've created is sufficient to support each one of us to interact with each other in a way that is based in justice, that's based in beauty, that's based in compassion. And without the humanities, um, we might forget what it means to be a human after all. So I love that last part because I really do think of studying the humanities and going into fields related to the humanities as the humans that keep the culture, 
we're the ones that keep the stories, we're the ones that share the stories and make that matter for those that are closest to us within our communities and within whatever fields we choose to pursue. And so I think of um, that kind of great power that we have just by uh, learning to study in this way and to think in these ways and get in tune with how we're related to the ideas that we're, that we're looking at and studying. So like, what do we actually study in the humanities, right? That's the thing, because we heard words like empathy, justice, systems, these big sort of concepts, but what do we study? So humanities are mostly interdisciplinary. Um, and so what that means is that you'll study kind of across different traditional academic disciplines and you'll develop projects or um, products that reflect a broad range of interests and perspectives that's sort of based on whatever areas you're most uh, compelled to pursue. And so typically a humanities degree will ask you to sort of take a broad range of courses to explore these different perspectives um, on the issues of our world. But I think that this, this meme really sums it up. Science can tell you how to clone a T-Rex. Humanities can tell you why this might be a bad idea. And so those are the kinds of problems that we solve, right? Humanities could, could possibly explain that. But here's just a sort of list of um, some of the types of courses or the topics of, of things you might be studying, gender and women's studies, ethnic studies, right? So that might look like indigenous studies or African-American studies, uh, film and television, digital humanities, LGBTQ studies, history, law, it really sort of runs the gamut. And so that's a nice thing about uh, the humanities is that it's kind of a broad range of study and that you're able to structure your knowledge base from these different perspectives and see how they speak to each other, right? Because in some ways, if we're looking at something like film and television, it's always already connected to representations of race or gender or orientation or ability. And so we're really studying both as we're learning to look at the sort of medium of film and technology or film and television, for example. So, oh, whoops, lost my screen, apologies. Okay, so we're gonna go into the chat time. And so I'd love for y'all to just type answers in as these come up and we're gonna play a game of have you ever. And so it'll make sense, I promise, bear with me. Respond in the chat if you have ever enjoyed talking to your friends and family about a movie or a TV show, which one? Have you ever had a chat with family, friends about movies, TV show that you felt really passionate about? Go ahead and share which one comes to mind if you've got one. You can just type it in the chat. Handmaid's Tale, oh my God. The, the latest season is out. I stayed up so late last night watching the first three. Mar Hannah, is that Marvel? Like Marvel Comics? Right on, yes. Okay, we're gonna get to comics, so just hang tight. What else? Handmaid's Tale, Marvel Comics, Soul. Oh, Soul, it was so good. There's so much to unpack there, just thinking about the music and uh, representations of race and really like Pixar in general, like there's so much you could dig into. Thanks, Robin. Evangelion, ooh, I don't know that one. Sally, I'm curious now, you'll have to tell me more. Isabella's like, yeah, like stuff. Okay, cool. Oh, Coco, absolutely. Avatar, yeah. See, anything, yes. Okay, robots, we're gonna get to robots, hang tight. All right, so another, uh, another have you ever, have you ever wanted to learn more about social justice or how to get involved with helping your community? Like, just a thumbs up, if that's something that's maybe interesting to folks. Okay, cool. Have you ever enjoyed connecting with friends or classmates and learning about aspects of your identity, race, gender, nationality, language, or these topics that are interesting to you? Thumbs up, if that's something that kind of has come up for you before. Thumbs up, thank you. All right, and then have you ever wanted to learn more about climate change, global poverty, migration, public schools, gentrification, activism, global culture, storytelling? Is anything sounding interesting to you here? Do you have interests that seem to kind of map onto these broad range of things? Anyone got anything they'd like to share, interest areas? Just check it out in the chat if someone types something. Culture. Public schools, absolutely. Yeah, and so the thing is like 
culture, I always think of it like a web, right? We've got all of these different sort of interconnected things, morals, right? Thinking about ethics, thinking about maybe say the ethics behind the way that society is structured, the way that cities build neighborhoods that dictates how schools are built, right? The populations that are in public schools and how those funds are circulated within a community. So something like that, just the question of community, right? Or culture could get us into thinking about how schools are formed, right? And, and think about what happens in public schools and how schools communities are served um, by the education system or not served, right? So that's maybe something that would come up in a humanities class, that kind of an issue. So I wanted to kind of like demystify the sorts of projects that you might look at, because sometimes interdisciplinary stuff can feel a little weird to, to like understand as a concept, but it's this sort of web of ideas um, that often forms in a humanities project. And so you might work on a project that's related to say something like the photography of social activism, histories of collective action and visual storytelling. And so I was just thinking about like, okay, here's some images that might come together to produce some sort of uh, project based in these intersecting areas of interest, right? For a humanities student, for example. You also might look at something Ooh, I lost my screen again, apologies. You also might look at something like LGBTQ film and television, drag cultures and histories, gender and performance theory, fashion studies. You could have a whole class or a project that's dedicated to these aspects of drag culture, television history, queer studies, really. And so I've just thrown a couple of things that came to mind um, for me if I was thinking about those topics, right? I might have a project that's analyzing, say, the newest season of Drag Race, or I might look at, um, older films, right? Cult films that, um, that are some of the, the like old school drag queens of the 70s, right? Pink Flamingos and John Waters comes to mind if any of you guys are film, film folks or Billy Porter and Pose, right? Which I just caught up on. So that's another kind of thing. And then, hello, we got to talk about cyborgs. We got to talk about comics. Uh, you could definitely work on a project or in classes that tie together something like comics, uh, future studies, climate collapse, cyborgs, right? I threw on just a few of the topics that you, that might show up in a class that's maybe focused on these um, concepts, right? That you tie together these different ways of seeing the world and try to understand um, what ties them together, right? So you might be wondering, how do you start studying in the humanities? Well, the good news is anyone can begin studying the humanities without uh, prerequisites. It's a very open program. There's always a class to get you started and invested in the study of the humanities right away. Um, and as I said before, since it's interdisciplinary, since most of the classes will take you across a sort of wide scope of knowledge, you're, you're able to sort of fill those in as you're, um, as you're wanting to be engaged. And there's a lot of different offerings at, uh, at all the campuses. So like I said, I'm at South, um, but they do have humanities and culture programs at North and at Central, if you're located there. All the programs are a little bit different. Um, it just, it, you know, they, they have similar ties, different classes at the different colleges um, are sort of built around the expertise of faculty members. And uh, so that's another thing to sort of keep an eye out for that you may want to end up actually taking courses um, at different colleges if you are studying in the humanities, um, that's a possibility as well. So. Educational pathways. I think people often want to know, okay, like, what am I going to do with this degree? Like, where would I transfer? And with the humanities, students transfer to all kinds of different programs. Um, gender and women's studies programs, geography programs, social justice and legal studies, if someone's maybe like a pre-law track or they're interested in activism and community organizing. Um, education. A lot of people that study the humanities want to move into education of some sort, whether it's community education or more formal education. Film and television studies, English and cultural studies, performance studies, history, philosophy, anthropology. These are all the types of programs that a student would be equipped to move into at the next, um, at the college or university level, right? And so it really just depends on where those interests build. And the other really cool thing that, um, that I like to sort of share about the humanities is like, it's a foundation. It's a foundation for how to think about the world, how to think about your place in the world, and how to start to read different types of media, um, everything from films to novels to comics to uh, visual art, right? It's a very broad sort of skill set that serves you well in these other uh, disciplines moving forward. So some of these are more interdisciplinary than others. A lot of humanities students seek out interdisciplinary programs when they move on um, from the colleges to sort of continue building that base. Um, or some students will say, you know, 
I'm actually really interested in, in uh, film and television after coming out of this. And so I'm gonna look at a program, say out of NYU, where they're really doing film and television studies exclusively. So that's sort of the way it can go. Um, but your humanities journey is really open. So careers and jobs, we are all Mona Lisa. We are all wondering where the money is. We are all wondering what will come for us after we leave. Um, careers often in education, community organizing, arts and cultural organizations. A lot of humanity, humanities majors find good fits in these organizations. Grant writing, human relations, uh, social work, nonprofit leadership, some go into law. And um, I think of other, other sorts of, of disciplines or, or careers that folks might go into. Uh, museum and library studies, these are often after um, graduate education too. Communications jobs of different sorts. Oh gosh. Um, yeah, and so this is, this is what I, I sort of threw out here for careers and jobs. But really, as I said, humanities is a base for um, building a skill set that's applicable to so many different careers uh, that you're a great fit for any organization because you know how to think critically, express, um, express ideas across a variety of context and understand how these work within larger sort of social constructs, right? And so that's useful in, in many different forms, many different fields. So that's what I have. I'd love to open it up for Q&A to answer any questions that um, you all might have for me. I know that's a lot of information. Um, but I want to make sure we're, we're getting to that. People can unmute. Is that a possibility? I didn't know that was going to be possible. Or you can ask them in the chat too. I've got a question up at the top uh, that Emily asked really early on. Um, Emily asked, is creative writing a part of the humanities? Yes, often um, students that are interested in creative writing might take a couple of classes in creative writing. Um, it's not emphasized, but I think of the humanities as a very creative field. And so even if you're not doing a bunch of classes explicitly on creative writing, you're gonna be flexing some of those same muscles of creating projects, representing your ideas, um, working with narrative, learning how to read texts that inform your practice as a creative writer. Um, but certainly a lot of students take maybe a few creative writing classes as a part of the humanities um, track. What other questions can I answer from folks? What are you interested in? Like, why did you pop into this room? What were you thinking about for humanities when you when you popped into this room? Anthropology. Yeah, and so this is a track that can certainly um, make a lot of sense coming out of uh, out of a humanities and culture track, you are studying human culture and anthropology's understanding of culture is like a, a sort of track disciplinary understanding of that, but it's a great fit um, if you're traveling into it or if you're planning for an anthropology program later on. Absolutely. Cool framework for that. Other thoughts, other questions. I mean, really, we should just, I think, get back to this whole T-Rex idea. Um, we need to understand why that's maybe not a good idea. And those are the kinds of projects. How did you get into this? Oh, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. Um, I got into the humanities um, sort of through loving literature. I fell in love with um, storytelling really early. I was always into um, novels and storytelling, I did a lot of uh, performance and theater work. And so my way into the humanities was uh, because I didn't want to just read novels. I wanted to study film, I wanted to study um, disaster studies. Uh, my dissertation that I, that I uh, worked on is on sort of performance cultures and disaster. And so I think about how performance cultures um, help us understand and process and empathize with those that are experiencing natural um, catastrophe and disaster. And so that's, it was, it was the perfect fit for me because it allowed me to do an interdisciplinary project and prepared me to sort of study 
holistically the way that cultures work and the way that art informs culture and responds to culture. Um, and that's a, a thread you'll see through most humanities classes is there's some sort of connection between art, society, human experience. And so for me, that's how it worked. I, I had um, an interest in those kinds of projects and wanting to know how the world worked at the level of culture um, that moved me beyond just looking at it in literature, but a more sort of embodied uh, on the ground experience of culture through performance. Other questions? We kind of jammed through it. So a lot of the classes, I can tell you a bit about some of the classes that um, are taught at the different colleges. At uh, South, for example, there's an emphasis in uh, film studies courses. And so a lot of courses are on uh, film studies, different approaches to how we understand film. Right now I'm teaching a global cinema class and we're looking at three sort of different themes within uh, global cinema. We're looking at monsters and monstrosity for the first chunk of films. Um, and we're looking at it mostly indigenous films. And then the second chunk is on Japanese cinema. And so we're thinking about anime and uh, we're actually watching Spirited Away this week, which is one of my favorite films talking about the structures of uh, Japanese culture that are folded into Miyazaki's film and looking at um, like the emphasis of Shinto uh, beliefs and Shinto culture in something like um, Spirited Away. And then the final chunk is on uh, the environment and thinking about environmental collapse in film. And so that's like the kind of structure that you might see within a course. Um, and then I'm also teaching in the summer, I'm teaching American, intro to American film, and it's a focus on representations of race in American film. And so I trace, we trace uh, film histories in the US and look at different representations of race throughout uh, US film history of the 20th century. And so we start all the way back with silent film, we move through the 50s and 60s with like post-war films and representations of, um, you know, largely uh, populations connected to like World War II, the way that um, Japanese folks were represented in those post-war movies. And then we move into like black exploitation films and into sort of newer uh, production. Like we watch some Spike Lee, we end up watching Get Out at the end of things. Um, and so that's, that's a, a sort of another structure of a film class. But we also offer classes on comics, um, graphic novels that's running pretty frequently. There was a course on video games that was offered. Um, a couple of years ago on video games and ability. And so thinking about um, ability and disability studies within video games. So it really varies um, a lot. And I'd be happy to, to answer anything you all have. I know this is kind of like an overwhelming structure, but I appreciate you being here. And um, I hope that this gives you a little kind of nugget of, uh, of information about what it means to study in the humanities. Okay, folks. Well, thanks a lot. I'm going to uh, go ahead and send us back to the uh, overall session. And I think I, can, I think we can do that by, let me hop to the end of the slides here. Yeah. So if we want to return to the main session, you can go ahead and leave the room, hop back into that main session. And thanks again so much for coming. Feel free to contact me anytime. Um, there's my email address. There's my website. This will all be listed on online as well. Um, so you can contact me. I'm happy to answer, answer your questions anytime. And I hope to see some of you in a class someday. Please, please come. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great Thursday, folks.